G'day guys, Ryan here from Next Level Adventures and welcome back to another adventure guys. Today I have brought you guys out to a very special spot guys. Today we are back in the Hill End Historic Village here in New South Wales. Now for those of you guys who have been subscribed for a little while will remember that I actually promised you guys that I'd do a little series on this particular region, in particular showcasing to you guys the best of the bridal track. So I thought guys it's been a little while since I've been able to get out there and do an adventure video to you guys thanks to lockdowns but today I'm able to finally come back out and what a better spot to kickstart our adventures again than continuing the bridal track series. So I'm really really excited for this one guys. It's going to be a first uh, for a few things guys. This is going to be the first trip that I'll be using the Pajero's brand new setup on. That's right and those subscribers will know that I've actually been changing pretty much everything on this vehicle guys and it's about 95% complete so I'm really excited to test this out today this will be the first test this new setup has gotten and I'll also be filming for the first time on the brand new GoPro Hero 10 so I'm really keen to test out how the new GoPro goes out here in these conditions so before we get started on this adventure guys, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to Next Level Adventures so you don't miss a single thing that we do. Anyway, now that you've done that, let's get right into the adventure. Now what is there not to love about a four-wheel drive destination like the Bridal Track, guys? This place offers so much diversity uh, in four-wheel driving styles. It's not too extreme, but there are some places that will get your heart racing just that little bit with how tight it is out here. But with that being said, the scenery out here is just phenomenal. It's one of the most rewarding drives in the Midwestern area for sure. There's plenty of spots to camp out here on the bridal track, guys. That is an absolute certainty. Uh, you can pretty much pull up in any place along here and make it a worthy night's stay. So with that being said, guys, here we are at last time's camping spot along the bridal track. Now, just get a look at that view. Those of you guys who have watched the other episode will remember this view and how stunning it was. Absolutely love this spot. The best thing about coming here this time, guys, is all of that rubbish that was here before is now gone. So good on you to the guys that have come here after me and cleaned up after themselves. It's really, really encouraging to see. This is a beautiful spot. It is not a marked campground. It's only about one and a half Ks down the bridal track. We won't be staying here this time. We'll be staying in a different spot, but I absolutely recommend that you check out this little spot here guys it's brilliant beautiful views a little bit windy but still absolutely worth it guys So it has been really, really wet out here in the Midwest lately, uh, ever since the drought broke. And rivers like the Macquarie, the Turon and the Goulburn River, all the big freshwater rivers in the region here, have been getting really full really consistently, which is really nice to see. Uh, those subscribers who remember the last time I came here, and this particular crossing, there was no water anywhere near it at all. But now the, the creek is full, flowing right down into the Turon River, and I'm not sure if you guys can hear it, but man, is it full and it is flowing nicely, which is really, really encouraging to see. It's really good for the local ecosystem here to have that river full. It's also good for those who come here camping. They get to see the river in its natural form, nice and full. Anyway, we're not that far from camp now, guys, and you guys will get to see just how full the Turon River is nice up close and personal shortly when we get to camp.
Wow, would you guys just get a look at this spot right here down the bridle track. This is why I love it so much down here. This is why I come here. You can't get much better than this. Absolutely phenomenal campsite this is. I'm really surprised that nobody else was actually here. It was a little bit how you're going on the last leg in here. You can tell that no one has been down here in a little while and the recent rain has washed it out a fair bit. I did have to put it into four low to actually get down in here and uh, without my lift I don't think I would have gotten too far through some of those washouts. So it's really good that we finally got down here though. Absolute peace and quiet down here. All you're hearing is the sound of the river. It's such a beautiful spot. Alrighty guys, now that we're set up at camp in such a beautiful spot, it's time to let you guys know what is actually new here on the Pajero. Now those subscribers will know straight away the most obvious thing and that is the rooftop tent. So it's time for me to finally reveal to you guys the Drifter Wildland Desert Cruiser 1.2 rooftop tent. I've been looking at this tent, I've had my eyes on it since it first came out. Those of you guys who are subscribed will know that I planned on getting this tent for this car for a very, very long time. And I just think that this is the perfect rooftop tent, not only for the Pajero, but for my setup in general. So this thing is only 57 kilograms. It is mounted on the Ocam 4x4 steel roof rails. So there's no more of those plastic stock standard roof rails up here anymore. It's really, really sturdy up there, but it is yet to be tested. So I don't know how well that system is going to perform until I put it to the test. So this will be the first time sleeping in the rooftop tent, first time really properly setting it up out here in the bush. So I'm really keen to let you guys know how that experience is. I am pretty confident that it's going to revolutionize the way that I camp. You already know that I like to sleep on the roof. I've been putting the swag on the roof for the last few trips. I just feel way more comfortable elevated up off the ground. And now I think this is going to be an absolute game changer for me. So moving around to the back of the car here guys, this is the first trip that I'll be using the XTM pull-out camp kitchen as well as the drawer setup. You guys will know that I did change over to this recently and if you guys have been watching the lockdown cook-ups, you would have already seen it in action but this is its first trip out. Um, we're not actually going to be cooking up on this tonight because the 12 volt system in the back here is yet to be completed. So you know how I said before, this build is about 95% complete. Well the last 5% features this bad boy right here the Enerdrive 100 amp hour lithium battery so that is yet to be wired in and that is kind of the last little bit of the job once that's wired in and we get the fridge in here on this slide then we're going to be fully complete and ready to go touring I'm really really excited for this so far all this battery is here it's just the battery sitting on a tray with an ultimate 9 battery monitor on it I have a 40 amp and a drive charger waiting to go with that really really keen to see how that performs but it's yet to be installed properly so that is the last five percent of the build anyway guys that is pretty much all that is new 
On the Pajero, besides a snorkel, I finally put a snorkel on the car. I thought it was finally time because up until now, I hadn't been really entering much water. But now, I'm starting to do those river crossings and come down to beautiful spots like this. So I thought, heck, why not do it? It looks good. So that is what is new around here. Stay tuned to see kind of my opinion on it because like I said, most of this is untested, guys. So you'll know if I don't like something or I do like something all those type of things in the coming weeks after it's been tested a little bit more. So now it's time to give you guys a little bit of information on the bridle track for those of you guys out there who maybe don't know too much about it and are interested in it. So the bridle track was used as the main form of transportation between the towns of Hillend and Bathurst. So back in the mid to late 1800s there was an enormous gold rush in this period and the town of Hillend was formed as a gold mining town. Now Hillend by no means is a massive town. So they needed to get supplies and transport all their gold into Bathurst, which is a main town. And so in order to do that, they created the bridle track here. So for a long time, it was used as the main transportation between the two towns um, until, of course, the gold rush ended and the road was no longer needed. So for a long time, the road sat unused until probably uh, the mid 1900s when a group of avid four-wheel drivers reopened the bridle track for recreational use and at that time I believe the council took it over these days it is managed by Bathurst Council just recently Bathurst Council took it over but the whole town of Hill End is actually managed by New South Wales National Park so the town of Hill End is a historical site it's still for the most part in its historical condition there are some old buildings and stuff there and the old layout of the town is still the same. In Hillend, if you guys have never been there before, if you're walking around and there used to be a building there, there is actually a photo showing you guys what used to be there and a little bit of information about it. There's also a museum in Hillend um, with all some old mining memorabilia. Bathurst, obviously Bathurst is still a booming town to this day. Um, Hillend was sort of left in the gold rush and so currently at this very date, the bridle track is still open. However, back in 2008 or 9, there was a huge rock slide about 19 kilometers down the track coming in from the Hill End side. So you can only go 19 kilometers down to Hill End, like down from Hill End down the track. You can no longer go the full way through to Bathurst. Now they are doing works on the bridle track to actually fully reopen it to people, but it obviously is a lot of work. It is a cliffside track, it's quite dangerous. There are a few other ways to get all the way through, which if you guys are still around in December, when I do the big two week trip in December, I'm going to try one of those ways to get all the way from Bathurst to Hill End um, via the Root Hog track. So really keen for that guys. If you wanna see that, make sure you hit the subscribe button, but that's just a little bit of information about the bridle track for you guys out there that didn't know anything about it. Really, really cool. Plenty of spots like this along here, guys. And as you can see, I've got the whole place to myself. It's really, really peaceful out here. Such an awesome spot.
Oh well guys, here we are. Another beautiful morning down by the Turon River. Uh, last night was pretty good. Interesting uh, first sleep up in the wildland. Um, it was good, what can I say, compared to having the swag up there on the roof like I used to. Absolutely brilliant. Um, the mattress is a little bit firm um, compared to what I'm used to, but it's not the end of the world. They do do mattress upgrades for these, so I might look into that at some point. Last night was incredibly quiet, actually. Uh, something that I was really, really surprised about for this region. So usually this particular region is full of wildlife, in particular goats. There's a lot of goats in this region, um, but last night there were none. There's tons of sign around of goats around this particular spot. Tons of hoof prints um, down in the mud and the sand and stuff like that, but I didn't see or hear any yet at all, which, you know, it's not a bad thing, but um, I was just surprised about it nonetheless. Pretty happy with how the setup's going though. Everything kind of works well. There are, there are a couple of little things that I need to tweak, like for example, uh, when climbing up the ladder into the rooftop tent, my shoes rub on the car door, because they've got such big feet. I they rub on the car door and we can't be having that, so um, I'll work something out in, in that department there, but um, I'd say I'm fairly happy with it. I can't believe how lucky we were to have this particular spot. I mean, we're just meters from the Turon River here. Such a beautiful spot down here. This one is probably one of the better spots along the Turon River that I've been to. I've been to a fair few over at like Little Wallaby Rocks, a few others around this region, and, and this one has to take the cake as one of the better ones in the area, that's for sure. So as for today, I won't really be doing that much because like I said, I, I'm kind of determined to do a full series on the bridal track. Now, in my last video to the bridal track, I did come to this spot at the very end of that video and showed it to you guys a little bit and I just thought I, I've got to come back down here. But I won't be going down any further today because I want to savor that for a future video for you guys so you can uh, see those places in a full feature length episode rather than just briefly brushing over them in a, in a video like this. I really want to keep the focus on this spot for this video because wow, it is just such an amazing spot. It's what I love about places like this. The tall trees, the beautiful river, it gives it that really mountain river kind of aspect and I, and I love that. I love uh, places like this, you know, it really gives you that um, kind of like rocky mountain wilderness vibe and that I love that kind of vibe I love these kind of rivers and stuff like that you really can't for me you really can't beat this type of atmosphere um, for camping it's just great Alrighty guys, well there we are, all packed up nice and early. Typically, just as I say that, a uh, big herd of goats is just moving down the hill just over there uh, opposite the river. So um, they're definitely still around. I kind of figured that scene that there was plenty of sign of them here, I just hadn't seen any. Anyway, it's still nice and early, but um, like I said before, I'm not going to track any further down the bridal track. This will be the spot for uh, this week's trip, and then maybe we'll come back down further in another week to come. So guys, I'll see you up the top.
Well guys, here we are, right back up where we started this adventure at the Hill End Historic Village, up the top of the bridle track here. What an awesome little overnight adventure that we had, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this one just as much as I did. It was awesome down there. If you did, remember to hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of our future adventures because we'll be heading back down the bridle track in the future for sure. Well guys, that is all that we have for this one guys, so I really hope that you enjoyed watching this one and as always, we will see you in the next adventure.